Okay then, let's talk about Mark Golden failed protests, failed miserably. Um, if Mark Golden was seeking fame from this protest, he got it. Well, he certainly got the attention of the international community. And um, it's not in a good way either. So one way or another, it is a failed um, protest for Mark Golden. The diaspora was um, embarrassed. The, the real diaspora, the people who have been participating in our political in our political life here in Jamaica for years, decades even, they were embarrassed by the show of anti-Jamaican sentiments by this group of people that went out and um, disgraced themselves and disgraced their country, and that they did that at the behest and at the at the at, at the calling of Mark Jefferson Golden. Karen Cecilia here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Please subscribe if you have not yet done so. Give the video a thumbs up. Share it. And yes, um, comment. No matter what the comments are. You know, those things we call me the mad woman, my bitter, um, what else? There's some other things. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> I like to watch you do that. Um, so I, I don't want to stay long, but it's it going to take a little bit of time. To say that um, not only did the protest failed, it failed miserably. And um, when I came out before the protest to warn people about the protest, my main reason at the time was to give the people who organized the protest an opportunity to recalibrate, to you know, to, to, to either call it off or revisit its purpose or redefine it. To give it a backdrop that would um, not undermine the credibility of Jamaica. Of course, they didn't take it. They they didn't take it because them puny mind would not take it. And knowing what I know now about some of the organizers of this thing, I am sure they would not have take, taken it because their lack of political understanding and international politicking. Um, would not allow them to understand what we were talking about um, in terms of what they are doing to the Jamaican economy. Watching Mark Golden's performance since the February 26, um, 2024 local government elections tells us everything we know in terms of what his plans are to gain power in this country. And his plans have nothing to do with asking Jamaican people to vote for him. His plans are not that. Because he now has nothing to say to the Jamaican people, and he already see very clearly that in spite of the fact that Mr. Ollis have lost some support among the voting public, that voting public that he has lost have not gone to Mark Golden, and Mark Golden knows it. So since the local government election, which he should have won in a landslide, but he couldn't do it. Since that, he's getting weirder and weirder. First, he went out and sent the Dan out to do a fake poll to deceive people. Once again, because his mantra is to deceive people, to tell people that he won an election that he lost. And um, him, him try that. That now will work. So, therefore, him now trying something else. And that something else is something like what, like what Trump did yesterday, the other day, when he told the Republican people not to vote for the for the border bill, that would um, help um, curtail and, and slow down the the, 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 the Ill, <coughs> sorry, illegal immigrants coming across the border. Trump said them shouldn't vote for it, them shouldn't table it because it make Biden look good and him look bad, so he wanted to stay until then. <coughs> To also remind me that Trump also said that he wanted the economy to crash uh, so that he can win and then um, he will fix it after it crash and, and, and him win. So, so Mark Golden seemed to be working a kind of a, a Trump agenda type type of thing where he can get the people to vote for him through, 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 through the means of just the people voting for him. Instead, he wants to um, um, get it through another means, through another way, you know, by not, by not, by not, by not, by not having people um, 
by having people go out in diaspora and um and destroy jamaica's economy with their behavior so mark golden has no record on which we can judge him except the record where he mash up the pmp him sees the pmp him and peter bunting and after seizing the pmp he decided that him now united to make a continue to divide it because the only way him can hold power is to continue to divide it if it is united if it was united they lose it long time but him no control the pmp he more control the leadership of the pmp and that was clear in the local government election results where the pmp base largely by and large stayed home then they are not with him and they have been saying that for about two years now that they're not in a nothing with him so at his funding because mark golden funded from the protest he got these people to consciously and stupidly decided to um to go out there and to prove themselves to prove to themselves and to their white master that they have some kind of worth now my understanding is that mark golden promised all of them something and one of the worst thing on social media is to be a social media influencer but yet people don't call your name one, one thing about social media is that if social media people now call your name you're not important in the scheme of things seriously not important in the scheme of things and therefore i am going to address two of them but i'm not going to call them names because i'm not going to give them any kind of big up and i'm not going to um um uh, uh, um to give them no no clicks you know so i'm not going to call them name their political protest was a political protest designed to disrupt the economy and to frighten and jewelers and it had everything to do with personal grievances everything to do with personal grievances and power seeking it was not about what is wrong with the government policies because people in the diaspora could get together and say we're not protesting but we'll be gathering at the at the at the consulate to register our disapproval of some government program that we don't believe is helpful to us here in the diaspora because they cannot um protest on behalf of jamaicans neither in the diaspora nor here they can't and if the jamaicans in the diaspora have some issues with how the government or how the country is, um, is being run them have ample way to register that and nobody's going to turn them away from registering that but um that was not their aim it was not that it was um it it, it was sold to people that it was going to be something like that but it was not that so when people turned up and discovered that it was a political protest it was a political protest everything they said and did is every indication that was a political process a protest and not a protest about some government policy that they believe were not helpful to the jamaican people which are some of their relatives and friends and either helpful to them as members of the diaspora so it wasn't that so most people that turned up who thought that it was that left angrily and and and, and fuming about um about it but in spite of that so much some of the organizers of the protest seems a bit giddy them out there seem to be celebrating but also on the defensive it's a defensive um <laughs> celebration because if they if it was successful there will be no need for you to be so defensive and trying to con convince everyone uh, that it was good no reason at all because when you are successful at doing something um people will seek you out um people that don't have the same agenda like you because it's those who want to seek seek you out i have been contacted on numerous occasions by foreign press people um some known some unknown want to talk to me about my support for the monarchy and my and my stance that jamaica if given the chance to vote as to whether we stay with the british monarchy or not jamaica Jama the jamaican people would vote to stay i am confident about that and um lots of lots of foreign press have reached out to me to ask me my view on it 
it's not something I go 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 boast you about. And that's where you call when people want to talk to you about something important. And you don't have to go out there and pick up your name and say all kinds of crap. Jamaica have had 11 opposition leaders since 1944. 11 opposition leaders. Edward Siago was the longest serving opposition leader in Jamaica. When Bruce Golden, when Andrew Olis became opposition leader, I, I don't remember one, one event that I saw him at in, um, in New York. Two, two. He went to New York and he went to Washington. I figured the Washington one was to introduce himself. Him, him young and him unknown. Him only known in, a, in, a, in a Jamaica. So he went to Washington and, and, the, and the notion that he preparing himself to be prime minister so that by the time that happened, some people would have heard of him before. So he went to Washington. I gather that was, that, that was about. His New York sojourn was about um, linking up with influential Jamaicans in, in, in New York to raise money, but also to link up with um, influential Jamaicans and uh, make a mark with them as well. You know, um, our current U.S. ambassador, um, um, Nick Perry, was one of those that Andrew Wilness uh, made links with uh, when he was a councilman in, in New York City. And, um, and that is that. Siaga, as opposition leader from 1989 to 2005, Siaga was opposition leader for, longest serving opposition leader. And while many of us would like to talk about some of the things that happened in the 1970s that the CIA led um, against Jamaica, since Jamaica was not the only nation that was targeted by the CIA, we know that Mr. Siaga also played a role in that but his role was minimal because the cia was going to do what the cia wanted to do and no matter who was the opposition leader or the prime minister they were going to do it anyway because the cia was busy overturning governments that they feel, that they felt at the time was too leftist or seemed a little communist like and was anti-america so siaga never had much choice in what happened in play along because he wanted to be leader but during his 14 years as opposition leader, Siaga was an exemplary opposition leader. Never spoke a bad word about Jamaica abroad. Everything that he had to say to Michael and PJ, he said it right here in Jamaica. Led protests, going to parliament, go chat crap, go up on stage, you know, I'm, 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 I'm meeting them. He talk up all kind of things. But never once within those 14 years, never once did Edward Siaga went on foreign soil and organized protest against Jamaica or said a bad word about Jamaica. Never once. Andrew Wallace didn't do it in his short stint as opposition leader. He didn't do it. He went to look money and go look uh, big up for himself and go build a profile, which is what opposition leaders should do if you're not known. Michael Manley never need to do that. He was Michael Manley. And Michael Manley spent most of his time as opposition leader um, lecturing. He, he was on the lecturing circuit, raising money for the party, rebuilding the People's National Party, reserve all his criticism for the government inside of Jamaica and outside of Jamaica when he was asked. Um, by, um, Michael Manley would say things like, you know, um, um, Jamaica is... Um, uh, big up Jamaica, spoke about Jamaica's attributes, uh, our contribution to the world, which was Michael Manley's favorite go-to argument, Jamaica's contribution to the world, Jamaica's contribution to the Caribbean. Jamaica was influential in the taking down of apartheid and Nelson Mandela freedom. You know? Jamaica was influential in that, you know. People don't, people don't, don't, don't really seem to remember those things. So Michael Manley spoke about our resilience as a people, you know, how we are. How we struggle. Uh, Michael Malley spoke about how we suffered at the hands of slavery and colonialism and the strides that we have made as a nation. Michael Malley glowed with pride in the nation that he led and wanted to lead again. So he would make comment, whatever comments he make about the government. I remember Michael made a comment about the government in relation to specific policies. And he would say things like, you know, we disagree with that policy or we disagree with how that policy is run. That policy seemed to be a good 
policy, but its implementation um, is not being done the way it should be done to benefit the poor. So those are things Michael would speak about whenever, whenever he goes um, abroad. And then he spoke about his own vision for an next PMP government and all the Jamaicans in the diaspora. He believed he, he used to like to enroll them into, the, into that vision and, and ask them to help to make that reality. Ask that they help in shaping the future under a new PMP administration. And of course, he begged money too. So Michael was a gentleman and a patriot. Then there was Portia. Portia was a real treat as an opposition. Let me forget the Portia. Bruce Golden, as a short stint as opposition leader, went to the went to um to Britain, I think, and talked some foolishness about him not wanna gain him, him not wanna gain people in him cabinet. And then when he became prime minister, I quickly have to walk that back, quickly and quietly, because he recognized that the movers and shakers were not exactly the president. Or, or the prime minister, the movers and the shakers of the financial institutions were a very, 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 very gay group of people. So he had to walk that back, you know. Portia was a treat in the diaspora, a real treat. The diaspora used to love Portia when she was prime minister, when she was um, opposition leader. She, Portia filled with love for country, pride and purpose, you know. Portia pushed back at anyone who spoke ill. Of the country and his government you know and when she was opposition leader and people and people criticize um, um andrew oldness push tell them andrew oldness is her son and she scolded people who criticize him unfairly she looked for a group of them and said he's doing his best um and 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 and, and what we should do is um work together as as, as a country a push of america I said that on foreign soil opposition leader she assured them, however, that not only is he doing his best, but with the PNP, if she's elected as leader, she was going to do better. The diaspora loved Portia. Our oh, mama P. Mama P. Our oh, mama P. She was class, clarity, purpose, conviction, love of country. Portia Simpson Miller is a patriot man. Peter Phillips is an extraordinary man. Of impeccable character jamaica lose out on the opportunity to have peter phillips as um serving as opposition leader for longer than he did and when one of mark golden organizers for the for, for the for the protest to destroy jamaica's economy he said on live that they are protesting because the country now have no leadership. And I don't know if he recognized that's the one in him, Rattigan. I can call his name and I'm going to call it again further down. He he was he was saying to the person who was talking to him that the country doesn't have no leadership. There's no leadership. But I don't think he realized what he said. Because by saying the country doesn't have no leadership, he's suggesting that the government is there and the opposition isn't. So I'm saying that neither the government nor the opposition now work because we are operating in a constitutional monarchy. We, are, we have a two-party system. The leadership of the country is not just the government. The leadership of the country is the government and the opposition who's supposed to be holding the government accountable. But neither of them work. And maybe he said it inadvert inadvertently, but maybe he also said it because maybe that's how he feel. And maybe Mr. Say, Mark, not really not cut it neither as opposite, opposition leader. I, I, I don't think he's that objective. But when I reach down to the other part, I will tell you why him doing what he did. Peter Phillips, when he went to Britain, big up Jamaica under the leadership of Andrew Oldness. Peter Phillips told the interviewer that Jamaica's history and our journey as an independent nation surpasses any particular government. And Peter Phillips made the point that there's a difference between the opposition and the government in policy but what unites us in our purpose is our need to deliver good service for the people that we serve peter phillips said that and andrew Wallace was the prime minister and peter phillips said that peter phillips said the government have different means we both do have different means as to how to institute policies that serve the people and the country but we both love our country Peter Phillips said that when Andrew Wallace was prime minister and Peter Phillips was um, opposition leader. 
So Peter Phillips is a patriot. Portia Simpson Phil, uh, Miller is a patriot. Edward Siaga, Bruce Golden were patriots. They are patriots. But Mark Golden, he is a treacherous weasel who would do anything for power. All our opposition leaders have behaved in exemplary fashion. All of them, they go abroad to meet movers and shakers, them raise money, them, wear, them raise awareness about economic possibilities in Jamaica. Of course, when they speak about those economic uh, possibilities, they are speaking about it in the future tense by saying to the people that they are meeting, should I become leader? Should I become prime minister? There will be an enormous economic possibilities in Jamaica. Not too bad about the country and spread mistrust and create an environment that could wreak irreparable damage on our country's economy. Not to employ people to undermine our country, to go protest in front of our, 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 our consulate and beat down the country, villainize the country, paint pictures of instability. If you want to be prime ministers, if you want to be prime minister, your overseas strips as a opposition leader, it's a primary bill of profile. If you don't have none, Peter Peter Phillips never have a bill a profile. Neither did Edward Siaga, neither did Michael Manley, neither did Portia Simpson Miller, neither did Bruce Golden. Andrew Oles built his profile. Mark Golden have no profile. He has no name recognition anywhere in the world. No name recognition anywhere in the world. He does not have a name recognition. And therefore, his should be a job where he go, 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 go do a profile, build a profile and help out Jamaica. But he can't do it. Especially the fact that he is the great grandson and grandson of savage, cruel slave owners. When opposition leaders visit with Jamaicans in the diaspora, they are supposed to just meet with them to assure them that things are not as bad as it seems in Jamaica, that things are tough, that yes, the government is uncaring because the policies that they are employing are not really working, but I am going to change that. You know? You can't hear the man look the work. So you have to assure people that things are going to be better, that it's going to be okay. So your argument to the people you meet in the diaspora should be uplifting and hopeful and promising, not treachery and betrayal, not paying big broke pocket man half idiots them who have nothing to offer to go spout bad vibes on the country. Not that. No. Not that. But that is what he did. Plus, donors, people who donate to political parties and political movements, they like uplifting messages. They like, they like when, 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 when people say, um, when, when the opposition leader say, listen, um, yes, you can contribute to me. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You know? So um, you just need to give me some money and I will do what I can. So that is that. So that is what you, as opposition leader, that you could, that, 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 that you should do. But by and large, the real diaspora, the real people in the diaspora, what they want is recognition, you know. They want bragging rights to, to say they are Jamaicans. They they want to, to be recognized, to be involved, to be to be heard, to be seen. Um they want to be involved. And 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 and, and that's basically the job of the opposition leader to go over there and involve them. But um Mark Golden employ the services of people that have absolutely no political experience, don't know anything about um, the political realities of Jamaica or the political realities of the world and how it impact Jamaica. Jamaica is a very powerful little country, you know. And um, it, it seemed like their personal ambitions and what they were promised um, overtook them. But if your personal ambitions and what you were promised can overtake you and let you betray your country, it means that you are not a good person. You are not... Because if you have more sense than the opposition leader or more political sense than the opposition leader, and you should say to him, listen, we can't do it like this. We should do it like that. Because you could have gone out there. You could have gone out there, a peaceful little crowd, even with the party and cocoa bread without the, pop, without the Pepsi. <laughs> you could have 
gone out there and say, well, we are representing ourselves at the consulate because we have some concerns about A, B, and C. But my God, the man them went out there with a group of people and they behaved badly. They disgraced themselves and they disgraced the country. And it's not something that is likely to be forgotten anytime soon. Not likely that it will be forgotten anytime soon. And then, one of them decided to come out and call me liar to say that Mark Golden wasn't going to be there. But let me repeat, it was Mark Golden's intention to be there, to be a part of the protest. Whether to, to be there physically or to be there um, through, through Zoom or live or calling, Mark Golden's intention was to participate in it. That was his intention, to participate in that nastiness, to participate in the bringing down of the Jamaica's economy because he see that as one way for him to gain power, to paint the country as a country that is not going right, to say to the international financial institution and to our partners across the world that not now go on to Jamaica I will need to burn it down. That was his intent. That was his intent. Because he see that as a way for him to get power. Because his only argument to the Jamaican voters is one argument him have to the Jamaican voters. Make get rid of this wicked and, 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 and uncaring government. Wicked and, 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 and dreadful government. Government, Wilson, the government that. And then him obstruct all kind of things that the government is putting forward, like Trump, because if him not obstruct it, the government will get the credit for it. And you know the government get credit for it because if the government get credit for him for it, the people going to let them back. And him don't have nothing to go out but convince the people to say to the people, this is what I'm going to do, you should elect me. Jamaican people are weary of him, not only because he's white and he come from slave owners' descendants. I mean, he's a descendant of slave owners. Not only that, but we have spent the better part of three years to tell the Jamaican people what he did. To the People's National Party is something that they should be wary of because he would do the same thing to the to Jamaica should they give him the keys to Jamaica House. And so he has nothing to say to Jamaican people. So his big hope is that enough people would be upset with Mr. Holness and then he can get to go out in the diaspora and get his full food people them to talk up things about the Jamaican economy and um, embarrass themselves and their country. If I was ever in government, if I was ever in government, or if I had any influence with government, and I must ask the people to do some research and find out for me, I would ban some of, some of them from this country for a couple of years for anti-country activity, treacherous behavior. You're a traitor. And when you're a traitor to your country, you must not be allowed the freedom and the access to the country that you have betrayed. You should be, you should pay a price. You should be punished for betraying your country. You shouldn't be able to don't betray your country and foreign side and then buy a ticket and come down here. Come hang out on the beach. You should not be able to do that. You're a traitor. And if, if Mr. Rattigan himself is an FBI, former FBI agent, I don't know nothing about that, but we're not going to talk about that uh, because Mr. Rattigan filed them ticket on my pillow, several files. Uh, I, I don't know if he's an ex FBI agent, no matter what some website or something say. Eh? I am not certain about that yet. So, but if he is and should go on foreign soil to talk up some things about the U.S. government. It would be in deep shit. If he, if he was, in fact, a former FBI agent and according to some of the things that him write up and him get some, I don't know. As I say, I have serious doubts about Mr. Rattigan being a former FBI agent. And I, don't say, and I don't say that lightly. I really don't say that lightly. But I don't have the facts yet. I don't have all the files yet. But if he was, 
and he should take up himself and go to Russia or China or Turkey <clears throat> or Syria or one in place. Go organize some people and chat up shit about America. He can't go back. As him land, they will arrest him. As him land, they will arrest him. He will become an enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. So, so them shouldn't have those rights. But I am not government. And um, they will keep their rights, I guess. Now I'd like to address the one from Florida who went out and called me lion. Come say, yeah, give me address first. Well, Mark never got there. That's where I reach, yeah. Of course, Mark was going to be there. Mark was going to be there. And I'm not going to be as nasty as Uno because I'm not going down to Funa level. Come and grow good. Yeah, man, me grow good. I, you know, don't take me lightly. Me grow good. Miss Audrey grow me good. My mother who founded the Jews Land community. My mother who worked for Tony Sparling and, and David Kaur and Mina Wilmot and Carl Russian Thompson. My mother who washed Michael Manley's shirt when he come to come, come walk and, and, and cook and, and everybody eat. Yeah, my mother. She grow me good. So I'm not going down to Funa level. But not now going for you, a Florida. You miss a man. And I can't do your friend and neighbor. Them. I never even know say lice still exists. Because them refer to you as the lice in Rasta man. It's not now going for him. Lice that eat out him brain. It's not me, say so. I'm just repeating. Not me, say so. I wouldn't know that about you, my dear. And I wouldn't do no research and you're not worth it. One look at something, one thing for you, and I decide that you're not worth my time for a research. Because not now going for you, neither. Then pass around a, a basket at the at the protest, and he was the one who shouted out, Jano, I mean, I'm getting money for you now. Yeah, man, because Jano, my pocket kind of, whatever the word he used, but I keep saying my pocket kind of, kind of weak or something like that. Sound like a damn income poop. Sound like a man we not now go on for. And sound like a man we never grow good. Pan live. All over the world for people hear you. <laughs> you never grow good. But fellas, gentlemen, because I grow good, I will not go to Funa level. So here it is. Keep on the nastiness to yourself and keep on yourself to yourself. And I will keep myself to myself. I will not address on her. But we're not traitors. I don't have to call no name for telling us we're not traitors. We're not traitors. And um, if I have anything to do with it, we wouldn't be able to set foot in this country for at least 10 years because of the behavior and the actions that we do to destroy and damage Jamaica's reputation. The one from England who said, who called me old man, cockhead, crackhead, Karen Cross. I could be his mother. But I saw it going in a grow good. So I can't expect any better from him. Nobody should expect better from him. He has already demonstrated what kind of person he is. Him and him friend, uh, business partner, fallout, and it was a nasty display on social media. Lee Amel putting out vice moats and yamming up them one and another like kai two of them to raise good. We know the other one him have problems and him definitely never raise good. Him have serious problems, but it clear two of them don't raise good. Yeah, your friend or your business partner have a little disagreement about who, who taking the money and who teething the money and who having the money and who get massage and for 40,000 a day and who are mine man and all of that and have problems. I want to, want, to, want to disagree and want to start quarrel and they want to go on social media to betray each other. I to, couldn't even have a quarrel without the betrayal. And now the two of them together supporting Mark Golden is the kind of people that Mark Golden is attracted to. Is Uno. Uno the kind of people I'm attracted to. Think about it, people. These two now supporting Mark Golden. They had a disagreement. It wasn't anything, at not my mind, that should have reached a proportion that it reached. But because them don't grow good, and them are not PMP, so them now have no PMP background, and nobody in a PMP would have grow them good. 
about anything like my mother grow me good. Them go out past social media. Social media, them the part who are uh, I release vice note left, right, and center. I do live left, right, and center to this grace and betray each other's trust. That's the point, you know. The betrayal of each other's trust. Those are the things that I'm talking about. Why they could never get me down to their level. Under no circumstance, they could get me down to their level. Because I would never betray the trust of my friend or business partner or brother, somebody I call a brother. And I can tell you, my friends them, have been my friends for, at the very least, 30 years. People that I call friends have been my friends for at least 30 years. And anytime me and them vex, it's never them vex. It's always me vex about something. And then the whole of them text them water and I phone them water and I call them water to find out what me vex and who make me vex. When not to do me just decide to vex or to chat to nobody. And then everybody tried to find out what, what griping me. Thank God for my friends. Because if this is how I'm to treat friends and brother, my brother, I'm a friend, I'm a partner. That's why Mark is attracted to me. So I'm going to have time for you. Keep your nastiness to yourself. Say what you will about me. I'm not going to your level. I will not say anything that I know about you. But I have one other thing to say to you. You say you have vice note and all kind of things. Listen to me because I'm only going to say this once. Release them. Every single do man do you do best. Whatever it is, release them. The other day you cuss off in a very nasty, dirty way. You attack Minister Bob Zegridge. I don't know what the minister did. I have not seen anything the minister did. But if the minister did something that upset you or really, really caught you, you could address it. But Jesus have mercy. Mm -mm. You went on a rampage calling the minister names, the base in our person, going out with all kinds of nastiness. And when you did that, I sent you a voice note. And basically in the voice note, I said to you, chill, you can't do that. Don't do that, it sound good. And you went on your live and tell the whole world well, not all world, 200 people. How much may I try to take away your freedom of speech? Because you yeah, look popularity of my name. Me don't need, listen to me carefully. Me have name recognition, 100% name recognition across the world. 100% name recognition across the world. 100% name recognition in Jamaica. 100% name, name recognition in at least. 30 states in the United States. May I tell you that? Some men need to be recognized. So and what about YouTube? YouTube is a fun place to be. It's great. And yes, you get to make a little money as well. Nothing wrong with that. That sound like bad mind. That too, Melissa. That sound like bad mind. When I started the Melissa... Thing. Many people might remember it's Facebook I was doing it on. But that's all like bad mind. I would never ever in an argument to I'm tell them why them not popular or why them on YouTube. That just sound like pure old dirty bad mind. Say what you want about me. I know none of it is true. So I don't care to clarify it with you. I don't have to justify my drinking habits to you either. But if you want to talk about drunk already people, talk about Mark Golden, Vice President, Norman Scott, who drink and piss up himself on road all the time. I my yard me drink. 
I want to big up the mothers. Them I hope on a drink a lot. The drinking mothers. Them I hope on a drink a lot on Mother's Day. Calling me old. I hope you never get old. Because John Denver. Um, I have a song. A line of it that says. It turns me on to think of growing old. That's me. Keep put a smile on my face all the time. To think of growing old. But you can't, you can't relate to that because you're a miserable young man who have serious issues and um, I'm not going down to your level to talk about n dirty, nasty things. But whatever it is you have, please release them. The same way you betray your friend. The same way you betray your friend. You betray your friend. You betray a trust. Let's say the friend is even a dirty scoundrel, which he is. A money-grabbing dirty scoundrel. Who does nothing unless it's benefiting him. What we do on social media, what I do, is for my party and for my country. And yes, YouTube pay your little money. What did YouTube pay us? Millions of dollars? Who need to make millions of dollars? Not we. Me not run no money. I am not on YouTube putting out something every day. I only go on YouTube and put out something when I have something to say. But I don't have to justify myself to Uno. Because Uno grow good. You betray your friend. And him is a dirty scoundrel as well. But you and him supporting Mark. And the two Uno fit right into Mark more of people. What Mark want around him. People who, who believe in betrayal. People who believe in Judasry. People who, betray, uh, who believe in treachery. That's Mark Golden group of people, which is Uno. So Uno can stay there with that. But also, do what you do. Send out where you send out. Anything you have, put it out. Come over here. Awa. So put it out. Mr. Rattigan is, and I call him only Mr. Rattigan and what other person name, by name. Mark Golin has apparently promised Mr. Rattigan that he's going to be commissioner of police. That he, Mark Golin, is going to make him commissioner of police um, when he becomes prime minister. I'd like to assure you, Mr. Rattigan, that that's not going to happen. Mr. Mark Golin is not going to become prime minister, but should the Jamaican people decide, you're not going to become commissioner of police. And your display, organizing this protest against Jamaica, is a first strike against you. The Jamaican people would not stand for it. Because I'm going to make sure your name is embedded in their brain. That when I'm going to vote, them remember your name. Wilfred Rattigan. That Mark promised that I'm going to be commissioner of police. Not going to be happening. Because on a treacherous betrayal, on a betrayal on the country. On a disgrace on yourself and disgrace on the country. And the people that go around, they're going to join you know, and stay with you know, for the party and the cocoa bread. They are also traitors. Some of them were misled to believe that it was something else. Some of them were misled. And as I said, let me repeat again. You could have had a protest. It could have been something different. Which is why I came out before the protest. Because the war room wanted to come out after. And I said, no, I'm going out first. The war room asked, why? I said, I've got to give them an opportunity to recalibrate. To reclassify it. To redefine it, to repurpose it, not to make it sound like you're going out there, you're going to tear down Jamaica and tear down Jamaica economy and write things for the Jamaican flag. What's the matter with Uno? The Jamaican government must take note that Uno had things written on the Jamaican flag that should be a. That, oh, listen to me. That should be like you break a law, you write things for the Jamaican flag. It's sacrilegious. There should be some kind of punishment for no. And it shouldn't be allowed in the country for a period of time. And the parliament must look into those things. The senate must look into those things where Jamaicans go abroad, go, go stage protests for the country. Political pros, protest. Political protest. It wasn't a protest to say that we in the diaspora are concerned about the, let's, let's find something. Um, we are concerned about the, the amount of young people that are being stabbed in schools. Let's say that. 
we are concerned and we have brought a letter here at the consulate to deliver to the Prime Minister and the Minister of National Security and the Minister of Education to say that they need to work out something to make our schools more safer for our kids. Something like that. On a go there with a political protest. A, a beat down the Prime Minister of the country and the government of the country. Uno a traitors. It's a betrayal of everything that is Jamaica. Everything that is Jamaica is betrayal. On foreign soil. Because Mark Golden want, want power and he figured that this is one of the way to get it. And so he said, Uno up, come do it. So Mr. Ratiga, you're not going to be no commissioner of police. Then there's the next one that call himself Captain, um, um, what name? Captain something, uh, what name? Foster, I, 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 I think his name is. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. Or, or, or forgive me. Um, Captain something or another. Now, him is quite something differently. Completely. Him is a... <laughs> It is a complete different kettle of fish. Him. Because him was, I think him was a, an insurance agent down in Ochi. He used to visit Andy Chin very regularly. He was a beggar. So I can beg like, like him blind. But he is also a Jamaica Labour Party member. He is a member of the Jamaica Labour Party. Yes. Captain whatever his name is. I think it's Foster. I just can't remember the name right now. And um, I had it. But I had it written down somewhere. But as usual. I write down things from pieces of paper. And then those pieces of paper. Um, disappear. But. Mr. Captain. Was down there demonstrating and asking and questions and and saying stuff and trying to um to, to, to beat up Jamaica why was he doing that he was doing that because as a member of the Jamaica Labour Party he had um wanted to be the 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 the, the um the, the consul general he wanted that job. He wanted the job to be Consul General of New York. <laughs> why? Why, 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 why? The man wanted to be um, the Consul General of New York. Hmm? Yeah, man. The, the Consul General um um from new uh, to new york and andrew Wallis didn't give him the job he wanted that work i never get it and because he never get it he decided to join uh mark golden yeah he decided to mark join mark golden and mark golden promised him that he'm going to be consul general of new york Consul General for New York. He never get the work. So I'm going to join Mark Golden. Betray him party. Betray him country. And then I'm going to join protests. Because he never get the work. And I'm very giddy about it. Because Mark Golden promised him. That I'm going to be. Consul General of New York. In Jama for Jamaica. Yeah. So I was doing it for him. That's what he was doing it for. Doing it for him. Nobody else. Just doing it for to see if he can get a work. Because nothing now going for them. Nothing now going for none of them. And so they came out to the base Jamaica. So I want to close by saying this. On a fail. On a fail miserably. But you know, succeed in one thing. I will give it a you know, better clap when I say this. I'm not going to now go clap. You know, succeed in getting pictures on every CCTV around 42nd Street end. 
on the succeed by everybody now know the face on the name on the succeed by placing Mark Golden on the radar of influential people and institutions as the man who wants to be Prime Minister of Jamaica leading financing a protest against the government of the country that he wants to lead very successful at that so now the world see him and the world say um uno trying to um to 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 get some kind of fame yeah everybody soon loud and clear people soon uno want fame uno got it so everybody now no no and you sir not going to be the consul general and you mr ratigan you're not going to be no commissioner of police you have my word on that and i'd like to tell you that should mark golden actually become prime minister i will have far more access than uno i'm going to better understand that who will have absolute uno probably go call me for ask me to put you on to somebody because i will have more access than uno right so i'm saying to uno uno get famous uno name famous uno um uno status as saboteurs is also famous uno picture also famous francis him name I just found a piece of paper. Oh, my Lord. How will me that do? Francis is his name. Yes. What, who wants to be um who wants to be um consul general? Francis is his name and I'm calling him Captain Francis. Not Foster. Him. Who Mark promised that him going to be consul general. And um him down there I organize protests in front of the consular officer that him, the can the consular office that he wants to lead you know so don't have no sense una so so no una lose it somewhere somehow una just una lose it something not right we don't know una not get it cuz una don't understand the politics una don't understand that all of this is politics and una do have no training in it una do have no understanding in it so you have traitors who want to lead consul consulate and then go protest in front of the consulate they have an ex-traitor who say that he is an ex-fbi agent which i have no proof of and no proof no exists in the real world but we'll soon find that out for true and if he if he was and him go organizing the protest anywhere outside of the u.s if he's a u.s citizen the man lock up him ask the moment him come back in. And the next one who betray him friend, the confidence of his friend, who claims say he might have things on me for release. Release them, man. Yes. Stop chatting us, release them. Well, who I hear them? Release them up. All of them. All of them. Who I hear them? And then him friend the one side who want to be MP. Done beat up Mrs. Oldness and Mr. Oldness. Him done expose every secret that he was entrusted with them things that used to just really rile me i just don't make it known because a glp business that but it really riled me that you would be entrusted with such things and just go out there seeking fame and money and just let it go but i saw no behave and these are the people that mark golden wants to be a part of a uno mark golden like because uno easy to dispose of easy easy uno easy to be disposed of if mark golden become prime minister uno will be easy to dispose of somebody will call and said why prime minister can't be associated with uno remember say when they do that and nobody now forget it and the resistance still have it out there god help uno us there's nothing that mark golden can promise uno that uno going to get absolutely nothing not you Mr. Captain Francis, not you, because you're just a, a regular 
uh, a belly. Yeah, a beg, beggar who will carry belly for Andrew Owens because Andrew Owens never make you um, to be consul general. And you never get the position in a Florida. And you never get the one in a New York. And you carry big belly for Mr. Owens. But you remember the Jamaica Labour Party? Mark the man know that. Mr. Rupert Captain Francis. We see you all. Well, I see you all on the depth of my radar. So, that's all I have to say for now. There's a lot more to say. But for now, I will leave it at that with Uno and Mark Golden, um, the, the, the leader of traitors, the leader of Judases, the leader of betrayers, yeah, and the, the leader that, that, that know how to find people when they grow good and exploit them. Because it's exploit, Mark Golden exploit the whole owner. Because should he become prime minister, he will have absolutely no use for none of you. None. I want to big up the, the diaspora people that went out with the, with the counter protest. I want to big them up and know they went out to stand up for the country. And um, I give them enough, enough props for that. God bless and keep them safe. I want to say to the people who, who attended that protest that I know many of you were led to believe that it was going to be otherwise. You never know it was going to be a political um, protest. But I also know that many of you knew what it was and went for the party and the cocoa bread to disgrace on yourself and disgrace on the country. And I would like to ask you to take a step back and think about your actions in the future. I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming you at all. I'm not trying to blame you. I'm trying to blame squarely at the feet of Mark Jefferson Golding, who instigated this thing to bring down the Jamaican economy. The Diaspora Conference is scheduled for next month, June, um, I don't have the date with me, in Montego Bay, bringing a lot of revenue for local 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 businesses in Mobe. Don't know where it's going to be in Mobe, but it's going to bring in a lot of, of revenue for local businesses. And I want to say to those in the diaspora who um, don't know about the diaspora conference here in Jamaica, if you don't have the fear and have the money, come in. The diaspora conference is going to be um, in Mobe. I'm, I'm going to look up, look up the date and put it on my Facebook page so you can see it. And you know, should come and support the Diaspora Conferences. PJ started it in 2000. Well, it started for a while. It came together in 2004. And you know, the Diaspora have a biannual conference. And um, it's going to be in June this year in Montego Bay. In the summer, it's going to be wonderful. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can go down there. If it's even one day. Go see if I can at least talk to some Diaspora people. And get some insights from them. And so them feel about things in the country. So, thank you for listening to my rant. God bless you all. Stay safe, everybody, and please keep the children safe.